Hi everyone, Michelle here with Plant-Based Kidney Health, and today I'm talking about fiber. Why fiber is so important for people with kidney disease, what you need to know about it, where to get it, how much you need, everything about fiber. So first of all, it's important to know fiber is non-digestible carbohydrates that can be um, fermented and by our gut bacteria and provides many benefits for us or the host. And the reason there's so many benefits is that fiber is helping to be a food or fuel or substrate for our gut bacteria. And by being food for our gut bacteria, this allows our gut bacteria to grow, to expand, and to diversify. And when that happens, then there's a whole bunch of benefits that we're going to talk about. So first of all, it's important to know that there's two main types of fiber. So you often hear of soluble fiber and insoluble fiber. Soluble fiber dissolves in water and it helps, it forms a gel like consistency. And then so it's helping to form your stool. And then the insoluble fiber, which is not dissolvable in water, is going to help bulk the stool up and promote you motility or moving that stool along and helping you go to the bathroom. Both types of fiber are important to get in your diet. A very typical example is an apple. So the flesh of the ap apple is more soluble fiber and the skin of the apple is more insoluble fiber. We want you to eat the whole apple. Both are important. And that is why if you have diverse whole plant foods in your diet, you generally get plenty of both types of fiber and the benefits of both types. So what are the benefits? And also we want to talk about the benefits specifically for people with kidney disease, because we know that with worsening kidney function, there's typically a gut dysbiosis or an imbalance of gut bacteria. And when we have an imbalance of gut bacteria, then there's this whole cascade of things that can happen. We have an accumulation or increased production of uremic toxins. There's more inflammation and there's faster progression of kidney disease. And so that's why fiber is so important is because one of the main benefits with um, helping with less uremic toxins, helping to lower blood pressure, helping to lower blood sugar, helping to reduce inflammation. All of these things help slow the progression of kidney disease. And that is what we want. So let's dive into um, some of these things and how much fiber we need. So first of all, it's important to mention that most Americans only get about 15 grams of fiber a day. And in a study that looked at people on dialysis, they were only getting about 11 grams of fiber per day. The recommendation is at least 25 to 30 grams of fiber per day. So most people get half the amount of fiber that they should have in an entire day. And so when we're only getting half the amount of fiber, we're not getting all these benefits for helping people with kidney disease. And that 25 to 30 grams is typically a minimum. There's a lot of people who consume 50, 70, 80, 90 grams or more of fiber a day, but you can't go from zero to a hundred. So how do we get more in our diet? So first of all, fiber is found in whole plant food sources. So your fruits, veggies, your whole grains, your legumes, um, even nuts and seeds. And so we want to be including more of these in our diet, but you really do have to exercise the gut and start slow. You can't go from eating 10 or 15 grams of fiber to eating 50 grams of fiber because that can cause some bloating, gas, flatulence, constipation, we want to start low and slow. So how does that look? You can start by um, simply adding more fruits and vegetables to your diet. And there's a lot of added benefits to doing that as well for kidney disease. But if you look at your diet and you eat one serving of veggies and one serving of fruit a day, add one, you know, an extra serving of both and then start to increase it. And you really want to try to have measurable um, goals when you're making food and dietary changes. So don't just say, I'm going to eat more veggies. Say, I'm going to have one cup of veggies with my dinner every day. And then you go to your lunch. Okay. Now I'm going to add a cup of veggies to my lunch and half a cup of fruit with my breakfast. And then you can actually track that, add that, and that is going to increase your fiber throughout the day. Other things you can do is you can try to have more meals where you're utilizing beans or other legumes as your plant protein source and also that they are high in fiber. But if you're not used to having beans in your diet, start with one or two tablespoons and then you can start to work your way up again so that you don't feel that kind of gas and bloating that people often think of with beans. 
Other things you can do is you can add a tablespoon of chia seeds or ground flax seeds to your oatmeal, to your smoothie, to your yogurt. Um, I've had clients who sprinkle it on a salad just to get a little bit more fiber in, and they prefer that over adding it to, you know, an oatmeal type of meal. You can swap out your white or refined grain products for whole grains. So things like millet, brown rice, wild rice, barley are all going to be higher in fiber than white rice. And this is a great time to mention that white rice used to be recommended. You would often see it for people with kidney disease. It used to be recommended because it's lower in potassium and phosphorus, but we know that the phosphorus in whole plant foods is less absorbable, only being absorbed about 50%. So we're really not concerned with the phosphorus and the potassium is not significantly greater in whole grains compared to white grain products. It could be 50 to 150 milligrams of potassium higher um, per serving, depending on the whole grain. But the benefit of getting more fiber outweighs getting a little bit more potassium, even for people who are on a potassium restriction diet. And um, that's another one of the benefits of fiber is it's helping to produce bowel movements, prevent constipation, and all of those things help with potassium blood level control as well. So that's super important. Another way you can increase fiber is by getting more berries in your diet. Berries are generally a lower potassium fruit and they are very high in fiber compared to other fruit. So even if you get a half cup, one cup of berries in a day, then that's a great place to start. And for everyone who's thinking about all these fruits and veggies and cutting and chopping and prepping frozen or fresh is totally fine. So you can have frozen berries. They're cheaper. They're easy to keep in your freezer. You don't have to buy fresh for everything. Now we always get asked, or I always get asked, well, should I just take a fiber supplement? A fiber supplement might be um, a route to go for some people, but when you take just a fiber supplement alone, you're not getting all of the added benefits of the whole plant food. There's other antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that you get along with the fiber that you don't get if you're just taking a supplement. And usually it's cheaper to just buy the food and eat the food and have a whole meal and get more fiber that way than it is to buy a fiber supplement. But if a supplement is a way that you need to go, then there's things like wheat dextrin, um, there's guar gums, acacia gums. I mean, these are all possible fiber supplements that you could take, but I would highly suggest that you talk with your renal dietitian and your doctor first. Some people who are on a fluid restriction or have gastroparesis might not um, be recommended to take a fiber supplement or might need to take a specific fiber supplement. So um, really in general, I would say is kid, people with kidney disease don't get enough fiber in their diet. Most people without kidney disease don't get enough fiber in their diet, but we know that for the benefits of reducing inflammation, less uremic toxins, lower blood pressure, lower blood sugar, um, better bowel movements, better excretion of potassium, there's so many benefits for people with kidney disease um, to help slow or delay the progression of kidney disease and to help prevent or treat that gut, gut dysbiosis or gut imbalance that contributes to faster progression. So, um, minimum 25 to 30 grams of fiber a day, work your way up to that amount and then higher if you're able to and work with the dietitian if you can to help get that in or replay this video and listen to some of the